Okay, so you've selected a carbon filter to reduce your odor in your cannabis production. You go to buy a carbon filter and you realize there's a lot of different sizes. Well, here at Tobacco University, I'm going to go over how to size a carbon filter for odor control in cannabis production. All right, let's ensure that you buy the right carbon filter the first time. So let's go over some things you need to take into consideration for sizing it properly. So first off, the room measurements and calculations. So calculate your room volume, not just your growing area. So what does that mean? You wanna take into account the full size of the room and not only where the plants are. You don't wanna simply be looking at the you know, length and width of the room. You also wanna take into account the height to get the full volume of the area. So an example, if you had a room that was 20 feet long, a 10 foot wide and then eight foot ceilings, you would have 1,600 cubic feet of volume. That's what you wanna take into consideration. Now CFM is cubic feet per minute. So a lot of times you'll see on filters, they'll list things in cubic feet per minute. At the very least, you should exchange your air about every three minutes. However, typically you should aim for really exchanging your air in your grow rooms uh, volume at least once a minute. You want to continuing with this example that we did in the previous slide, if you, if you had that 1,600 cubic foot room, the minimum would be every three minutes, which means you would need a filter that would ex have a rating of at least 533.3 CFM. However, you really want to be targeting something at 1,600 CFM. So like, why don't, wouldn't you go larger? Well, simply that be, does become more of an expense. So this is why people try to sometimes reduce the size of the carbon filter, but this can restrict airflow and this could cause other issues with ventilation. So again, shooting for that once every minute to three minutes should be your target, favoring closer to that minute if possible. And however, while we did those nice math and it seemed nice and easy, and hopefully you're continuing to watch this video, there's other factors to take into consideration. It's not as simple as doing a quick math equation. You also want to take into consideration your lighting. Uh, if you're using high intense discharge lighting, it will require more ventilation and also provide uh, grow room cooling. Also the filter types, how restrictive is the actual filter you're using? You know, some of the more expensive ones have that finer carbon uh, particulate and they're gonna flow a little bit better. Also, what is the ambient temperature? Warmer temperatures will typically increase the airflow required to aid in cooling, so you should be closer definitely to that one exchange of the grow room's volume per minute. And we also need to consider the CFM loss, meaning everything's not perfect. Uh, how much CFM is lost through a 25 foot section of ducting? Well, approximately 3% if it's a straight hard cast uh, to 7% if it's flexible ducting. Uh, and also one to 4% additional loss for every 90 degree bend. This is why ideally, if you had that straight hard kind of casting, um, that is the most efficient way to move air through a ducting. If you have this flexible ducting, which makes it great for installation, you do lose about one to 4% and you wanna minimize, as we can see, not shown here, minimize the amount of 90 degree bends. You wanna have everything to be as straight as possible. So you have as efficient movement of air as possible to allow you to use the quote, the smallest filter so you can try to reduce the cost as much as possible and also maximize the efficiency of your ventilation system.